The Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai volcanic eruption that caused the tsunami. The eruption of the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano in January 2022 has highlighted global unpreparedness for the impact of large scale global events. The tsunami from the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano in Tonga on 15 January 2022 was the first in a series of catastrophic eruptions for over 130 years, the last being the eruption of the Krakatoa volcano in Indonesia in 1883. Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai it was also the first multiple eruption tsunami since the Krakatoa event and the first recorded by modern technology. The resulting shock wave was the most significant ever recorded and the volcanic eruption was the highest on record. The Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai event is comparable to the Papua New Guinea under sea landslide tsunami in 1998, which resulted in 2,200 deaths and the 2004 India earthquake tsunami which killed more than 250,000 people. All the mechanisms are different. They all identify a previously unknown tsunami hazard. Papua New Guinea's underwater landslide generated a highly destructive tsunami, while an incident in the Indian Ocean saw a tsunami of high-magnitude earthquakes strike along a convergent boundary beyond the Pacific Ocean. Volcanic activity along Tonga's convergent boundaries is not unexpected. Hunga Tonga, Hunga Haapai last erupted in 2015, but the magnitude and violence of the 2022 eruption is truly astounding. The unpredictable nature of eruptions reveals that the global hazard of large volume volcanic eruptions is underestimated and identifies global unpreparedness for the impacts of these events. Globally, there are 42 volcanoes that have the potential to erupt on a scale similar to Krakatoa and Hunga Tonga Hamad Hapai. So the events of 15 January 2022 should serve as a warning of the potential dangers of another cataclysmic eruption. Many of these volcanoes, unlike Hunga Tonga Hamad Hapai, are close to high-density coastal populations. So far, there has been little publication on the mechanics of local eruptions or tsunamis. More than 100 papers on the event have been published, but most focus on satellite data recordings of atmospheric disturbances due to shock waves and far-field tsunamis. Both are caused by changes in atmospheric pressure at sea level, which initially give rise to small waves that increase through a process called resonance, which is determined by the relationship between the speed of the shock wave and the speed of the tsunami. There are still fewer papers on local or imminent tsunamis. This mechanism is still uncertain. There are several possible causes of this tsunami, including pyroclastic density current collapse, caldera collapse, and phreatomagmatic explosions, where magma interacts with seawater. One of the fears of the eruption was the impact on the climate, possibly from sulfur dioxide, SO2, but measurements indicated that the volume of SO2 was quite low. Even more surprising is the volume of water pumped into the atmosphere. Recent studies show this to be a high volume that can affect the climate. As for warnings about the effects of the event, there has been little backlash so far. This can be attributed to the volume of unpublished papers, such as seafloor mapping in the region. This unpublished paper could add to the uncertainty of the local tsunami mechanism. The source of the catastrophic peak explosion has also not been determined, whether it was the mixing of magma beneath the caldera or the ingress of cold water in the building during the final phase. There is still much research to be done and many lessons to be learned from the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai eruptions and subsequent events. But once the results are in, hopefully the real litigation work can begin. Erupting particles, volcanic ash, do we see any clues about the violence of the event? 
The disparate magmas mix tightly and mix before the eruption, with visible contrast on the micron to centimeter scale. This intermediate or andesite composition has a low viscosity. This means magma can quickly be pushed out through narrow cracks in the rock. Therefore, there is a very fast tapping of magma from 5 to 10 km under the volcano, which causes a gradual collapse of the caldera. The collapse of the caldera causes a chain reaction as seawater suddenly rushes through the cracks and faults and encounters the magma rising from the depths of the volcano. The resulting high-pressure direct contact of water with magma at over 1,150 C caused two high-intensity explosions approximately 30 and 45 minutes after the eruption. Each explosion further decompresses the magma below, continuing the chain reaction by amplifying the bubble growth and magma rising. After about an hour, the central eruptive plume loses energy and the eruption switches to ejection of particles of lower height in a concentric curtain-like pattern around the volcano. 